Hey everyone, I'm Priya Raj Gopal, Director of Product Management here at Couchbase, responsible for our mobile and edge computing solutions. And today I'll be talking about edge computing applications and architectures with Couchbase. So what is edge computing? Edge computing is a distributed computing topology that aims to bring data and storage to the edge. And so what is the edge? The edge is the location where data is generated and consumed. So where exactly is this location? It's really a continuum. There's a lot of literature around the taxonomy of the edge, but this is the classification model that I personally like the most. So starting with micro edge, these are commonly the things in IoT. They are smart sensors, they are capable of minimal data storage uh, and, and processing. They are capable of running tiny AI ML models. Then you've got the mini edge. These are your embedded devices. They are capable of running uh, embedded um, operating systems such as embedded Linux. Then you've got your medium edge. Uh, these are your smartphones, laptops, uh, desktops, commodity servers. Heavy edge, these are specialized network appliances, uh, IoT gateways or HCIs or hyper-converged infrastructure devices. Then you can actually deploy your uh, data center at the edge of a mobile operator network. This is typically referred to as MECs or multi-access uh, edge computing net centers. And finally, you can deploy uh, a data center or a micro data center at the edge of a cloud provider network. Now, when you look at this in one dimension, you would notice that data and storage uh, and compute capability increases as you progress from the micro edge all the way to the cloud edge. But at the same time, volume decreases. So what I mean by this is that the number of micro edges that you should expect is several orders of magnitude than the number of cloud data centers that are out there. So what is the value proposition of edge computing? Uh, and what is the buzz around edge computing? First off, it's the resiliency to network disruptions. Guaranteed access to data regardless of the reliability of network conditions. This impacts business continuity. Then you need uh, guaranteed real-time access to data regardless of the network bandwidth or the latency of the network. Because at the end of the day, if data is traversing the network, you are bound by the speed of light and the laws of physics. Then security. This is about data governance, data privacy. Uh, adherence to regulatory policies, and then finally bandwidth savings. I'll talk a little bit about bandwidth savings in the next slide. So cloud-centric computing brings with it the economies of scale, but when you're talking about applications that need edge computing architectures, there's really a paradigm shift in the way the data is generated. In traditional cloud-centric architectures, data is generated in the cloud, and then it is distributed to the edge. But then when you're talking about edge computing applications, like mobile applications, IoT applications, the data is flowing up. It's flowing up from the edge to the cloud. So transferring that massive volume of data, which is generated from the edge all the way to the cloud can be cost prohibitive. Here's a very simplistic model of an application architecture. You have the application tier that includes your UI, your business logic, then you've got your database tier that holds the data that the application relies on. And then you've got your infrastructure tier. That's your storage, your compute and uh, network. Now, when you're talking about a distributed architecture, you're essentially talking about distributing all these three tiers, the application tier, the database tier and the infrastructure tier. Now, when you're distributing the data storage component, you also have to consider the synchronization of data across these distributed locations. So where exactly does Couchbase fit in? Couchbase offers an integrated data storage and data synchronization solution. So we sit in the database tier or the data tier. Now, I've attempted to broadly categorize the edge computing use cases. So in the remainder of the presentation, I'm going to discuss use cases and focus on architectures, looking at it through the lens of the data platform layer. I also want to be clarified that there isn't a prescriptive deployment topology for each category of use case. So really, depending on the specific requirements or the constraints within which you are operating, you may pick an alternative architecture. So let's consider the case of classic offline first field applications where there is a need to be able to run applications on edge devices, even in completely disconnected modes. 
So insurance agents making claims adjustments, uh, selling or updating policy information in disaster areas where there's poor or no network connectivity. Or consider the case of utility workers undertaking regular maintenance activities or during or doing repairs. Uh, they need access to task lists, infrastructure maps in remote locations. Or the dining experience uh, at restaurants can be vastly improved by having the wait staff take meal orders, check on the status of the order, make updates to the order right there from their mobile devices. Or finally, in healthcare, consider the case of mobile health workers. Uh, who can uh, pull up patient medical history, um, uh, update prescription information, health records, even if their network connectivity is spotty. So now let's look at typical deployment topology to meet the needs of these applications. So edge devices, it ranges from smartphones, uh, tablets, uh, mobile uh, devices, et cetera. Couchbase Lite is an embedded database, so it can be embedded within the applications which is deployed on these edge devices. Uh, so these edge applications are capable of local data storage and processing. So being a standalone full featured embedded database, Couchbase Lite can be operated in completely offline mode. So these applications can operate in completely disconnected environments without any connectivity to the backend uh, uh, data servers. Now, Couchbase Server and Sync Gateway are deployed in the central cloud data center. And when there is network connectivity, Couchbase Lite and the edge devices can synchronize data with the central cloud data centers. And this is done over a WebSockets-based data synchronization protocol. This protocol has built-in resiliency to handle network disruptions. Next up, let's look at a category of use cases where there is a need to process large volumes of data in real time. So end user experience is really a key driver of these use cases. Consider the case of smart retail stores where you use AR, VR based immersive applications to enhance cons uh, consumer or customer experience. So smart mirrors that can make recommendations on accessory depending on address that you're purchasing or video cameras that can track uh, customers as they navigate the aisles of the store making personalized recommendations or smart shelves that can enable a, a touchless checkout experience. This concept of a smart retail, of course, can be uh, extended to a smart city where you can have smart video surveillance technology to reduce crime. You can have smart metering for usage monitoring, smart traffic lights for, to alleviate traffic congestion. Now, these examples, these are not science fiction. So technology such as 5G, it's going to propel the growth of such data intensive applications. So data from these smart locations, massive volumes of data need to be processed in real time. And a lot of this data is temporal in nature and sending it back to the cloud is cost prohibitive. So in contrast with the deployment topology, the star-based deployment topology that we saw earlier, here we have uh, included a couple of additional layers. You've got the edge things and you've got a provider edge. The provider edge could be a, a data center that's at the edge of a mobile carrier network, or it could be the edge of a cloud provider network. It could also be a private data center. Things, uh, of course, correspond to smart shelves, the smart mirrors, point of sale terminals, the smart cities, you know, example from the examples that we saw earlier. Then you've got devices. This could be tablets, laptops, etc. And then you've got uh, the micro data centers, server racks, dedicated network appliances, IoT gateways, access gateways, etc. Of course, you've got your things that communicate with the IoT gateway using a suitable communication protocol. And uh, similar to the field application case, you have Couchbase Lite, which is embedded within the edge devices. Couchbase Server and Sync Gateway can be deployed on servers that are running at the edge of the cloud. This is at the provider edge. Data is synced using the WebSockets replication protocol between uh, Couchbase Lite enabled edge devices and the Couchbase cluster that's running on the provider edge. And for clients that don't support uh, or they don't have the resources to embed a full featured database, so for instance, browser based thin clients that are running on edge devices, they can use the public REST API that is exposed by Sync Gateway to get access to the data uh, in the servers at the provider edge. 
Finally, Couchbase Server and Sync Gateway can also be deployed at the central cloud uh, data center. And data can be synced between the cloud and the edge data center using the InterSync Gateway replication protocol. This protocol is also WebSockets based. So the same WebSockets based data replication technology that is used for syncing data between the Couchbase Lite enabled edge devices and the upstream uh, sync gateway can be used for syncing data between sync gateways distributed across a hierarchy of data centers. Now let's look at a category of use cases where the edge data center needs to operate autonomously in completely disconnected mode. So data privacy and governance um, are, are primary drivers of such use cases. And of course, it's just the network infrastructure constraints. Just the unavailability of network connectivity is a driver of such use cases. First up, passenger cruise lines. These are floating cities with large onboard data centers. Passengers on board the cruise ships can take advantage of all the onboard services, even if the ship is on voyage and is, has no satellite connection for extended periods of time. It could be days or even a month, depending on the uh, duration of the voyage. This concept of passenger cruise lines, of course, can be uh, applied to submarines in the defense sector. In the healthcare field, hospitals can locally process patient monitoring data and provide real-time responses while adhering to data privacy concerns. Similarly, ambulances, these are transforming into edge computing data centers where EMT staff can administer patient care en route to the hospitals. Now, defense. This is a big sector when it comes to edge computing. You're dealing with truly mission critical applications where real time data processing in disconnected environments is, is required. So uh, think of uh, military combat vehicles or uh, remote border patrol stations or uh, command posts. So you have to uh, process all this data in a real time in disconnected environments. And finally, industrial uh, IoT. IIT or Industry 4.0. This is a key application of um, uh, beneficiary uh, of, of edge computing. Sensor data from equipment uh, in a manufacturing center or uh, factory flows is aggregated, it's processed and analyzed uh, locally by the on-prem data center uh, on the factory flow. And it's used for use cases such as uh, preventative maintenance, uh, real-time alerting. And most of the time, this data, which is temporal in nature, is just uh, processed locally and discarded. But sometimes the data is filtered and aggregated and sent back to the cloud. Now, at a high level, this deployment topology is very similar to the model we discussed in the previous use case, except in this case, the data processing at the data centers, it's happening on-prem. Once again, you've got the things that uh, includes the sensors on the factory flow in the example that we saw earlier. You've got edge devices. These could be ruggedized tablets or phones that is uh, carried at the remote uh, military outposts or within the ambulances. You have the on-prem data centers. It can take the form of a server rack or dedicated network appliances or IoT gateways. Once again, Couchbase Lite is embedded within uh, the applications that's running on the edge devices within the tablets, within the smartphones, et cetera. You've got Couchbase Server and Sync Gateway, which is deployed now on the on-prem servers. And here's the interesting bit. Now, I mentioned that Couchbase Lite is an embedded database uh, for mobile, desktop, and an embedded application. So this means that Couchbase Lite can also be embedded within web services applications, such as a Java servlet, which is running on a server deployed on the on-prem data center. Now, the choice of whether you deploy Couchbase Server and Sync Gateway on your on-prem servers or a Couchbase Lite-based web services application really depends on your use case. It depends on the scaling needs, the cost, the, the server hardware that is available on-prem. Things, they of course, they talk to the upstream gateway devices or the IoT gateways using a suitable communication technology. Once again, data uh, from the Couchbase Lite enabled edge applications 
is synchronized to the upstream uh, uh, SYNC gateway on the on-prem uh, data center using the WebSockets based replication protocol. And for clients uh, uh, that don't have Couchbase Lite embedded within them, like the thin clients, they can communicate with the Couchbase Lite based web services application through a RESTful interface. This RESTful interface, of course, needs to be implemented by the web services application. Once again, as in the case of the previous deployment topologies, Couchbase Server and Sync Gateway is deployed on the cloud data center. The on-prem uh, Couchbase Server Sync Gateway cluster, it syncs data with the cloud-based uh, cluster over the WebSockets-based InterSync Gateway replication protocol. And the Couchbase Lite-based web services application syncs, they also syncs data with the same cloud-based uh, uh, Couchbase Server cluster using the same WebSockets uh, replication protocol. Something that I didn't uh, <clears throat> explicitly state earlier, uh, in addition to being resilient to uh, network uh, disruptions, the data synchronization technology also supports fine-grained access control. So fine-grained access control policies can be applied at the various ingress points. Now, final uh, category of use cases, let's look at use cases where there's a need for collaboration in disconnected environments. Now, while there may not be any internet connectivity in these disconnected environments, there can still be local area connectivity, uh, which is enabled through technologies such as Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, Ethernet, et cetera. So, Consider the case of flight attendants who are taking meal orders on their tablets. They can automatically update the inventory data that is synced in real time with the other flight attendants. So that way, a passenger does not place an order for a meal that is not no longer available. In the restaurant uh, industry, self-order kiosks and fast food chains, they can identify a customer, uh, bring up her preferences, apply loyalty points, vastly reducing uh, wait times. Now in the post COVID era, this can be used for touchless curbside delivery and pickup service, where the kitchen is automatically notified of the arrival of a, cu a customer. This can also be used for streamlining the drive-through order experience. And finally, uh, construction workers at construction sites or workers in underground mines or offshore oil, rings, oil rigs where they may not be in internet connectivity, they can still collaborate with each other in these disconnected environments. So let's look at a topology uh, for this uh, sort of use case. Now, while we are showing a star topology here, you can envision any of the deployment topology, like the hierarchical data center deployment topologies to be applied in this case. The key really over here is that Couchbase Lite is deployed on these edge devices that need to collaborate with each other. So in addition to the data sync technologies that we talked about earlier, the inter-sync gateway replication or the replication between Couchbase Lite and Sync Gateway, Couchbase also supports direct peer-to-peer -peer data sync between Couchbase Lite. So you can leverage the peer-to-peer uh, -peer data sync technology, which is again WebSockets based, to sync data directly between the Couchbase Lite enabled, uh, web uh, Couchbase Lite -enabled devices without the need for a remote control point. So the peer-to-peer -peer sync happens in a disconnected environment, but where there is network connectivity is restored, then each of the individual uh, Couchbase Lite devices can sync data back to the mothership, the upstream uh, Couchbase server sync gateway cluster in the cloud. Alternatively, you can designate one of the Couchbase devices to be the one that syncs data with the remote cluster. And that device can in turn uh, sync data uh, with all the other devices in the peer-to-peer -peer network. Now, this particular model has got the advantage that you don't have to sync the same data uh, downstream from the cloud data center to each of the devices. Instead, you uh, sync it once to one designated device, and that designated device syncs that data to the, all the other devices in the peer network. Now I'd like to wrap things up with a discussion of use cases and applications by mapping the edge, uh, the retail use case to the edge classification model that I presented at the start of the presentation. 
Now, when it comes to retail, applications really uh, span the m multiple categories that I talked about earlier. They include the classic in-store product-related applications such as product catalog, promotions, pricing, order, inventory management, etc. Now, retailers are starting to adopt an omni-channel strategy to offer a unified customer experience regardless of the channel that the customer uses to engage with the store, whether it is in-store, whether it is online, uh, through the web, or whether it's mobile. You have employee applications that are used for tracking service orders for in-store pickup and curbside pickup, etc. Or you can also have employee uh, field applications for tracking product installations, delivery orders, making changes to the orders, order fulfillment, etc. And then finally, you've got the store of the future, uh, the advanced IoT, AI, ML-based applications for immersive consumer experience, automated checkout process, smart inventory management, facilities management, etc. So in the context of retail, uh, examples of micro, mini, or medium edge devices, they include legacy point-of-sale terminals, mobile point-of-sale terminals. You can have in-store laptops or desktops that are used by employees uh, in the store. It could be used by employees in the field. You can have commodity servers that are hosted in an IT closet at the store. Then, of course, you've got the sensors on the smart shelf, the smart mirrors. That is the micro edge. You can also optionally, this is optional, but you can optionally deploy in-store dedicated hardware and gateway, which is capable of handling uh, advanced analytics of data. Now, this constitutes the heavy edge. Now, this heavy edge, right, servers, uh, they could be deployed uh, and, and host, self-hosted, or you can take advantage of several of the managed on-prem infrastructure that is available from cloud providers, such as AWS Outpost, uh, AWS Greengrass IoT or uh, Azure Stack Edge. Now, applications, store applications can of course be deployed uh, in store on the in store servers. It can be deployed at the edge devices, but you can also offload them and deploy them at the edge of a mobile carrier network. Now, you can deploy it at the edge of the mobile carrier network, of course, uh, but you can also deploy it at the edge of a cloud provider network. And the choice really depends on the access technology that is available. So when you're considering large flagship stores in large metropolitan cities, they could have a private or dedicated 5G network. And this is enabled through uh, technologies such as 5G network slicing. Now, mobile, mobile operators are rolling out their own infrastructure or they are collaborating with cloud providers for such deployments. Now, of course, in areas where 5G uh, coverage is not available, then one can deploy these applications. The store applications can be deployed at the edge of the cloud provider network or in private data centers. And these could be uh, accessible over a fixed broadband connection. The regional or the central cloud data centers are, of course, uh, accessible over the internet backbone. Now, in sum, uh, edge computing complements cloud computing. As we saw in all the deployment topologies that uh, we discussed earlier, there is, of course, the edge uh, topology and the edge data centers, but you also have processing that happens in the cloud. Edge computing topologies, they have a broad range of applications across a variety of industries, uh, hospitality, travel, healthcare, retail, uh, industrial, etc. So in order to support the distributed topology application database and infrastructure tier needs to be distributed as well. Now, at the end of the day, if you're wondering if edge computing is the right architecture for you, it's all about rationalizing the workloads. So you have to determine uh, whether it makes sense to uh, deploy and uh, compute and storage at the edge or whether it makes sense to send that back to the cloud. We are definitely not advocating that all cloud-based workloads have to be brought to the edge. May, some applications make perfect sense to be cloud-centric. So identifying the business case, identifying the needs of uh, the data management needs, what data needs to be processed at the edge, and what data is critical uh, for the cloud is important for such use cases. I'm going to leave you with some helpful resources. In particular, be sure to check out our customer use cases, uh, customer case studies around edge computing. We also have a number of customer sessions here at Connect. 
uh, where you'll hear firsthand from exp experts in their field on how edge computing is transforming uh, their industry and how they are leveraging uh, Couchbase for their applications. Again, I'm uh, Priya Rajgopal with the product management team, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.